Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're having a great Sunday. We are here with another video on misconceptions, and this time it is the most misunderstood planet. It is none other than Ketu himself. People are dreaded, they are fearing all the time. Ketu Mahadasha. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What will happen during Ketu Mahadasha? Everything will collapse, everything will fall. I won't live. I will die, I will commit suicide. Oh my God, every day so many messages pertaining to Ketu Mahadasha only. Okay, so what are some of the misconceptions? The first one, the biggest is Ketu Dasha will always be bad. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Whenever you talk of good and bad, Primarily, there are three houses, the 6th, 8th, and the 12th. So if Ketu is linked with these houses, then that Dasha can be challenging. But if it is linked with good houses, for example, the uh, 10th house, 11th house, 5th house, 9th house, 2nd house, then the Dasha can be good. Now, sometimes it is linked with either of these houses. Then what happens? Then you get the good part and the bad part together, all right? But to say that it will always be bad, you will have the worst time of your life in a Ketu Antar Dasha or Ketu Mahadasha. You're making serious blunders. In fact, I know some people, the moment they see Ketu Mahadasha, they say, oh, seven years of trouble. <laughs> yeah, there are some people who behave like this. I don't know from where they learn astrology. And then uh, that person who heard this comes to me and tells me, sir, uh, this person told me, you know, that seven years of hell I will face. And I'm like, your Ketu is in the fifth house. So you will learn a lot of uh, new information. Fifth house is upgradation always. So is it bad or is it good? Oh, but this person never told me, you know, this person only told Ketu is very bad. Why? Because he's Ketu after all. He has to be bad, right? No, it's not like this, all right? So this is the first misconception. So please judge things by houses, all right? And the sign will tell you to what extent are you happy with getting that or to what extent are you putting efforts, to what extent uh, are you accepting it as a part of your destiny or you are trying to um, use your free will and uh, deal with it in the appropriate manner, okay? So that's the sign. And I have lots of videos on predictions of Rahu and Ketu. So I'll put it at the top uh, once the video is over. So please watch there. All right. From the Bhav chart and Rahu Ketu has special rules. So if you ask me below, my Ketu is in this house. Uh, it doesn't work like this because Rahu Ketu, remember, they give results of so many things. They give results of their dispositors. So for example, if, Ra, if Ketu is in Leo, and uh, suppose you are a Capricorn Lagna. So Ketu is in the eighth house of your Bhav chart. Let's assume in the Bhav chart also he's in the eighth house. Not only he's in Leo. Now suppose where is Sun placed? Sun is in Capricorn, suppose. So the dispositor of Ketu is in the Lagna. So he will give results of the ascendant also. Something to do with body or physical appearance can happen that time. And because it is 8th house, uh, there could be some uh, untoward incidences, right? Or if sun is in the, in the 11th house, then it's like the 8th lord in the 11th. So then uh, Ketu can give you sudden gains, right? This is how you see if it's 10th house, some big promotion could come. Suddenly it could come out of nowhere. And it also gives results of planets who, is, who, who are conjunct with them. So suppose for a Capricorn, Venus is conjunct Ketu in Leo in the 8th house. Then what happens? Ketu will also give results of the 5th and the 10th. Why? Because Venus lords these two houses for a Capricorn ascendant. And finally, it gives results of the, that place where he himself is sitting. In the Bhav chart, not in the Lagna chart. All right? So, Bhav chart. Please watch my video on Bhav chart. All right? Because you get confused when I say Lagna chart, Bhav chart. Yes, these are basics of astrology, which you should know. So please watch my Bhav chart video, all right? So this is the first misconception that Ketu Dasha is always bad. Now, the second misconception is Ketu will give you a lot of things materially in the beginning and he will take everything away from you at the end of your uh, 
dasha wow sounds very scriptural sounds very fancy but this is not true this can be true in one situation let me give you an example actually this is not true but indirectly you can understand when this can be true so suppose your ketu mahadasha started so first is ketu antar dasha then you have venus then you have sun then you have moon let's assume these four planets are very well placed in your chart okay ketu venus then you have sun then you have moon so then what will happen by default naturally you will feel oh my god ketu is like king he is giving me everything and then at the end suppose your jupiter saturn and mercury are very 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 badly placed in your horoscope then what happens these are the last antar dashas right so then you say oh ketu is so cruel he gave me and he take he had taken everything back but you're just making a mockery out of yourself because that's not ketu doing all this that is these planets so, but sometimes what happens venus is good uh, then sun is bad moon is good mars is bad so up down up down up down these are consecutive antar dashas so then you say oh ketu dasha has been you know up it has been down it has been up it has been down so for god sake it's not happening because of ketu it's happening because of the antar dasha so so don't be so blind that you uh kick away the antar dasha planets there are nine planets in astrology do not forget that if you go to western astrology uranus neptune pluto also even if you don't believe or you don't include them still there are nine planets do not forget it all right adasha cannot override the horoscope okay. then what is another misconception another misconception is that uh, ketu will always make you confused in the dasha you will be totally headless for 7 years all right this is another misconception and yes uh, by the way if you are new to the channel then uh, please subscribe to the channel and if you want to watch other videos i'll put it there and if you want a consultation uh, please go to my website down below god is there with you all the time just look at him he will also help you during this ketu dasha okay and one special announcement i would like to make uh, one of my senior god brother he has been uh, making a very beautiful course on journey of self discovery which is like a introduction to spirituality and unfortunately this course has started today but uh, you can still go and register i will give the links below so this course will help you and if you are running k2 all right then this course is very important for you i'm just being sarcastic it's important for all uh, so that you can get introduction to uh, science of soul and bhagavad gita and mantras and all this all right so please go and join the course if you are interested the very good friend of mine a senior of mine all right so you won't miss uh, you won't regret joining this course so ketu will always make you confused no 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 he doesn't makes you confused he makes you confused if the overall horoscope is a headless horoscope headless horoscope means the person doesn't have any goal in life the person doesn't know what he or she should be doing in life the person has absolutely no idea why they get up in the morning all right if that is your horoscope if the primary factors of the horoscope are not good then and you have backed it with a terrible lifestyle you are eating meat you are indulging in watching adult material you are drinking wine alcohol you are roaming with crooks gossip mongers idiots thugs and jokers <laughs> then yes it is the most confusing dasha it will wreak such an havoc in your life you won't forget for the next 1000 years if this is who you are all right because rahu ketu always punishes you people think saturn punishes you no rahu ketu when they punish you my god the difference between saturn and rahu the punishment of saturn and rahu ketu's punishment is saturn beats you and he spares you something <laughs> rahu ketu won't spare you for the next 1000 years if you do not improve yourself so you can do some unnecessary worthless rahu ketu remedies which people keep doing all the time you know like i won't take name of so many totkas people keep doing such a waste of time you have to stabilize your mind rahu ketu represents the nodes of the moon for god's sake you cannot change rahu ketu by doing anything external 
you have to do meditation you have to read the bhagavad gita or the quran or the bible you have to understand who god is you have to understand who you are who your relationship with god is you have to understand what you are doing in this world how to obtain spiritual elevation and spiritual perfection then you can control rahu which is allurement sin material desire and ketu which is spiritual liberation moksha elevation otherwise you are dreaming for the next thousand years if you have a terrible lifestyle doesn't work like this all right rahu and ketu they are a manifestation of your lifestyle so you have to check your rahu and ketu is very simple no fancy stuff you don't need astrology just check your how your life is what time do you sleep what time do you get up do you get up and do mantras in the morning do you get up and take a bath early in the morning do you get up and uh, recite some uh, the vishnu sahasram or some other stotrams even if you are from a different language uh, religion i don't care or you are just uh, sleeping at 2 am in the morning and getting up at uh, 11 am in the morning and just uh, grazing over whatsapp social media youtube <laughs> all right so if this is how your life is and you are going around hogging like uh, animals in parties eating meat and uh, tasting uh, different sorts of uh, you know beverages alcohol and all this you know, then your own it is really screwed up basically and you are screwing them up more all right so improve your lifestyle that is the only way by which you can improve rahu ketu no remedy works for rahu ketu absolutely no remedy you can do a thousand remedies and you tell me if it works i bet no remedy works i have seen this from last 25 years no remedy works for rahu ketu it works every remedy will work provided you change your lifestyle which many people in kali yuga don't like to do because kali yuga people uh, as bhagavatam say they are manda sumanda matairo so that is why they always complain about horrors of rahu and ketu especially ketu i have seen so don't blame ketu it is you who are to be blamed you and your pathetic lifestyle that is to be blamed do not blame the planets all right if you do that you will screw up yourself more you are already screwed if you are ketu and rahu dashas are difficult your life is already screwed up big time remember because they show desires from the past and inclinations okay so if you are having difficulty in rahu ketu dasha and you are going around running like you know uh, like running in a circle searching for some fancy useless totkas and remedies shortcuts you are inviting disaster i am telling you this you are inviting royal disaster actually never make that mistake improve your lifestyle only then this will happen all right who do you roam with rahu is ruler of aquarius co ruler along with saturn who do you roam with hmm ketu is co ruler of scorpio what do you do when you are alone that scorpio Scorpio is that which you do when you are alone. Just ask yourself: When you are alone, what do you do? What are you thinking? Aha, uh-huh. that's it. <laughs> All right. So these are misconceptions about it. And another mis- another misconception is that uh, I will see some terrible calamity during this Ketu Dasha, which means some family member will pass away. or uh you know my spouse will die if ketu is in uh, yeah so they say ketu represents cutting you know ketu cuts everything okay this is another misconception people think that wherever ketu is that house is like cut from your house <laughs> i don't know from where they get all these uh, fancy misconceptions you know there there's so many misconceptions i also want to find some day where do you find all this you know ketu is cut cut bole like cut cut it So suppose Ketu is in seventh. Either your spouse will die, or you will be forced to be unmarried, or your spouse will cheat on you, or you will cheat on the spouse. All right. So this is what people think, but these are not true actually. This happens. This can happen, provided now there will be uh, uh, at least five million people, or you know, ten million, twenty million. I don't know many, or half a billion people who will have Ketu in seventh house. and among them uh, there will be 10% whose spouse have cheated on them or they have cheated on their spouse or their spouse has left so these are all generalizations okay so do not make such stupid judgments by seeing oh ketu is in seven so spouse will die all right nothing of that sort and the another misconception is that ketu spoils any planet he is conjunct with my god this is huge i see i don't know from where this has come <laughs> 
So then I ask these people, why do you feel like this? So they apply some stupid uh, modern scientific logic. They say, oh, actually, you know, Ketu is headless. So if Ketu is conjunct with Venus, so he will make Venus also headless. And what's the logic? <laughs> Ketu is headless, but Venus is not headless, right? So, so suppose, for example, if somebody has Ketu Venus in the sixth house of Bhav chart, then uh, if Ketu Dasha is active, Ketu Mahadasha, Venus Antar Dasha, the person can have issues in marriage and that might lead to a separation, not necessarily divorce. So then they will say, oh, this bloody Ketu, you know, he's with Venus. That is why Venus gave separation. No, that's not the damn reason. The damn reason is this planet, both of them are sitting in the sixth house, which is the house of separation, celibacy, singlehood, singledom. <laughs> that's the reason. It's not that Ketu is conjunct. And another misconception is uh, whoever Ketu is conjunct with, Ketu will uh, force you to become spiritual through that planet. You know, this is another uh, stupid idea which people have in Kali Yuga these days. They feel that unless you have some terrible calamity in your material life, like your spouse has died or you have a divorce or you have been ruined uh, financially, you will never become spiritual. All right. This is not true. There are many billionaires, many millionaires who have the best of marriages, you know, who are the most handsome. They are the most atheistic sometimes. Sometimes you get people who are average, normal, even they are atheistic. They are, they are not doing any spiritual practice. So don't think that if you get something material or you lose something material, only then you will become spiritual. Okay. It has nothing. Spiritual progress has nothing to do with your material life. This is something which you have to understand. All right. So don't think like this. The houses will play. Uh, and tell the result, all right? And another, this is the last and probably the biggest misconception. Ketu in certain houses will give you moksha. Final, all right? And this is very fancy, I've heard. You know, uh, like 12th house of Navamsha, Ketu gives you moksha, all right? Uh, and if Ketu is Vargottama, Vargottam means same house of D1 and D9. Say, so, sorry, same sign, then it's Vargottama. Then Ketu gives you moksha. Another crappy nonsense. And another is, you know, Ketu is Bhavottam. Bhavottam means he's in the same house in D1 and D9. Then he gives you moksha. Moksha is not a product which is in a supermarket and you go and put it. That's not what moksha is, all right? Moksha means spiritual elevation and liberation from material world. Just one goddamn placement cannot give you moksha. You got to work for it, all right? And that's the problem. Uh, people ask me, oh, uh, I have Ketu in 12, so my moksha is confirmed, right? And then I ask, okay, what you are doing in life? Oh, actually, you know, I was just uh, having this uh, dinner party and, you know, we are just indulging in all this. So this is not how you get moksha, all right? So uh, therefore, understand that a planet reflects your actions, okay? Ketu in 12th can give you losses, the worst of the worst losses. It can take you to spiritual land, uh, foreign lands and give you spiritual elevation there. So that depends on the horoscope. But Ketu in 12th is not a blind indicator of moksha. Or Ketu is exalted or with, with sun and moon, it gives you moksha, my God. As if it's like a commodity in a supermarket, you know. Jao, uthao, dalo, khatam. It's not like this, all right. Even uh, Ketu in third house can give you moksha sometimes. Yes, it can happen if you, you, if you know how to utilize it properly. So the question is not where your Ketu is. That's not the question. The question is, do you have the idea of how to approach Ketu? Do you know how should I utilize Ketu? How should I activate Ketu? Do you know this? If you know, then even a placement, uh, which is supposedly the worst placement for Ketu, supposedly again, the seventh house, um, can also give you moksha, all right? If you know how to use it. And if you don't, Ketu is in ninth, twelfth, any goddamn house, you won't get moksha, all right? And the last misconception is, Ketu is in the ascendant. My whole life is ruined. No, not like this. Don't worry. <laughs> Your life may be ruined. That can happen if the overall chart is not very good or which essentially means you have a terrible lifestyle. So only in that case it happens. There are so many people who have Ketu in the first. So it doesn't mean that your life is ruined. Right? 
there are many misconceptions and i would like to love to know from you also what do you think about them so please write it down in the comments and if you're new then please subscribe to the channel and god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and if you want a consultation you'll find the link down below